Hello and welcome to grow a lot more in July. So here we have some onions. Um, we've got a mixture of two actually. We've got a white set and we've also got a red set. So um, I believe these were electric, um, these red ones, that's the species name. And for the life of me, I can't remember these white ones. Uh, now it's been quite damp over June, so I am actually quite worried about the onions rotting. So I'm gonna harvest these now. Uh, and you can typically tell that these onions are ready also because their tops have gone at a right angle. Um, so they're ready to be harvested and they're ready to be dried out. So I need to cure, um, and this is a perfect kind of container. So this is actually a mushroom box, um, which I picked up for free. Um, so we're just going to reuse this um, as, a, as a crate to dry them out. And the reason why it's really good is because it's got ventilation going all the way around. So, and it's just as simple as twisting these out. So really nice and firm. And the tops, as you can see, they've gone to a complete right angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest these and I'm going to put them up in the orangery come shed at the top um, and they'll dry out in there and they'll be ready in a couple of weeks time. So while I'm doing this, uh, let's have a look at what else is coming up in today's program. In today's program, we'll be looking at sowing peas for autumn. We'll look at the disease and pests that come with July. We'll be drying herbs for winter up on the decking. We'll be looking at what jobs there are to do in July and also what there is to sow and grow. We'll show you what there is to harvest in July and we'll be showing you the flowers that are growing on the Grow A Lot More site. So we're just going to sow some peas. Um, this is actually quite a good time of the year to do that, um, but it only really is for a few varieties because you can get disease towards the end of the year. Um, it's powdered mildew. So um, there's a couple of varieties that I'm going to try, and this is one of them. Um, Hearst Green Shaft, and it sends up um, quite a good crop, actually, quite a good yield um, you get from this. Now. You can grow them just straight from the packet and you can take them, but they're actually quite dry. So it's really quite a good idea to do a little bit of prep beforehand. So 24 hours ago, I put some of these peas into a small dish. I soaked the peas in water overnight. And they've actually started to sprout. Um, and what that does, it just gets moisture straight to the pea, bulks them out and starts off the germination process really quickly, and especially considering they've been in the greenhouse. Um, but you can do it on a window seal, window seal as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sow these uh, at about five centimetres apart. We've been sowing peas throughout spring and we'll probably be doing it until about the second week of July. So those will be uh, sewn into the ground. This one's in pots, so ideal if you've got very limited space. And then once you've sewn them all in, just push it down with your finger and you're looking at about five centimetres worth of depth. 
once they're all firmed in, just give the top a quick scrape. And we have a little bit of problem with things like crows here and blackbirds. They'll come down and they'll pinch out the new shoots. So if you need to, it might be an idea to net this over the top first, let them grow till they're at least a couple of inches and then look to build the framework on top afterwards. So always ensure to keep the label as well, um, just in case you like the variety and you want to grow it again next year. Now, what you need for this is we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, we've seven canes here. You can do uh, less than that if you wish. And um, we're gonna create an obelisk, it's called. So um, it's like a teepee. Uh, so the way you do that is just by simply pushing bamboo or large sticks all the way around the outside of the pot. And try and evenly space them if you can. Across slightly. But give yourself one area. That's the reason why I like to do seven just so that you can have a little bit of access to be able to harvest from inside. And then what you do, when you've put them all in at the base, you need to collect them all in the middle. Just get a piece of string or twine, some wire, something that will go around the top, just to secure that into place. So what we need to do next is, peas have tendrils that they send out um, and they won't be able to grab onto this bamboo, or at least not straight away. So we need to create um, a lattice work on the inside so the peas then can grow upwards um, and have something to grow on. So uh, what's really useful for this is just some twigs. So, so we collected these um, from just down past our allotment and we're just going to look to build that up in stages and it doesn't matter how rough it is it's just so that the tendrils can start working up So once you've done the main structure, it's really important to give this a really good water. So once you've done that, place it in a really nice sunny position and you'll be looking to harvest at the end of August uh, to the first frost in about October, November time. So it's well worth giving it a go. Now, apart from the problems with pigeons, crows and thrushes and other birds, um, we do have other problems across the allotment. So let's have a look at some of those in July. Look out for slugs and snails and remove them when you see them. Black aphids might be a problem around runner beans, just use a soapy solution to wash them off. Still keep an eye out for that red lily beetle and remove them when you see them. The white cabbage butterfly is typical at this time of year, so just make sure you put nets over your brassicas. Pigeons can cause quite a bit of damage also to brassicas, so such as things like broccoli and purple sprouting, so make sure that you keep those covered as well. Potato blight can be a particular problem due to high humidity, so if you do get it, just cut the potatoes down to the floor and then just harvest the potatoes after 10 days. So here we are up on the decking, surrounded by some absolutely beautiful dahlias. Um, but I'm up here for a purpose, and that purpose is to dry some herbs. So we're drying this loris, um, you know, you can also do it with bay, it's the same kind of species. Um, and we're going to do some with sage and rosemary. 
and they're then going to hang in the shed come orangery at the back um, or at least in a nice dry uh, in a nice dry area with uh, good ventilation now when you're creating your bunches what you don't want to do is you don't want to have too much if you have too much um, it might rot and you've lost um, you've lost your herbs for the winter it will take a few weeks for these to dry out um, but then you can just harvest them put them in a jar and keep them as you would something which you would buy for, from a supermarket now what we need to do is we need um, some scissors and just a piece of string and then we're looking to then just wrap the string around put in just a really simple knot and then once you've done that on the end just create a loop because this is just going to go onto a hook or screw in your injury and then it's as simple as that so that's one job that you could be getting on with for now let's have a look at some other jobs in July now is the perfect time to start staking asparagus sunflowers and sweet corn leave seed heads to dry out and collect the seeds later on it's a good time to take softwood cuttings make sure that you keep water baths and bird feeders topped up make sure that you feed and water plants in pots thin out pears and apples to ensure a good quality crop tie in climbing plants sow winter crops like kohlrabi and cabbage if you haven't sown squash, it's not too late to plant some plants now. Trim off side shoots of tomatoes and make sure you give them a weekly feed. Unless you want extra strawberry plants, trim off the strawberry runners. Only water chilies and peppers in the morning. Harvest as much crops as you can. Place netting over your soft fruit to protect it from birds. Water the floor of your greenhouse to increase humidity but also to reduce spider mite. Plant winter seed potatoes like charnet in pots so you've got a winter crop. Help run a bean flowers set by spraying them with water. Place netting over brassicas to protect them from butterflies and birds. Continue to weed throughout the season. Now is the perfect time to plant out leeks. If you want white stems, dig a deeper hole than you usually would and plant them in the ground. You can also do leeks as multi-sown units. These should be ready to harvest in about October to February time. Now then, one of the biggest jobs to do in July, August and September is actually to harvest the crops that you put so much time and effort into. And it's a bit of a shame actually to take them out. So, however, what I need to do now is these cabbages are ready. These are April cabbages, uh, that's the variety. Um, and they were sown back in February time. And these will be ready to harvest now and we should have cabbages all the way through the summer. 
um, so which will be really nice. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut right down at the base. That will also allow more light to get to these other ones as well, um, which will then help the heart then get even bigger. So we're going to take the one out the back because that is certainly ready and it's got a rather large heart. So let's get a knife and let's get that cut out. Right. So now we just got to get it out. Be careful not to damage anything else. And there is a beautiful cabbage. Absolutely stunning. A lovely heart in there. And it's a fantastic summer cabbage. So I'm really looking forward to eating that. So let's have a look what else you can harvest in July. This is the first for us now. We are growing, or going to try and grow, Swede. Um, I've heard they're actually quite difficult to grow, but um, we seem to have quite good um, brassicas that we managed to grow here. So we're gonna give these a go. These I sowed about two months ago now, um, and they're becoming really healthy plants. And they've actually started to show root growth um, at the bottom of this pot. So. We've just removed all the onions from this bed and rather than leave it empty, uh, we're gonna try and grow some of these in it. 
and it's quite a good time of year now to start sowing and planting out your autumn crops. So you're just going to tap the base and as you can see it's got absolutely beautiful root system on this and we're going to put maybe three maybe four in here we're going to give them quite a good spacing so about 15 to 20 centimeters of space you can sow these directly as well now so um, and apparently these are quite a good variety and we're just going to dig a hole and I always like to use the pot so same size a bit deeper and you can put brassica collars on these as well um, to stop club root so, there we are that same size so that now can go into the hole and then we can backfill around that. So that's it today from me. Thank you very much for joining us at Grow A Lot More. Hopefully we'll see you all again in August and if you'd like to subscribe please subscribe down below. Uh, we are also on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and Tumblr now so uh, you can follow us through those as well. But thank you very much and again I shall hopefully see you in August.